And then this is where, Brian, you tell me, but I think this is where, according to some emails we got and according to my personal preferences, I think this is where the show took a hit, at least quality-wise and potentially, you know, the momentum. Bullet Club interview Jen and Juice and the Gun Boys with Tony Schiavone, followed by the Bullet Club's Jay White against Ricky Starks, 30 minutes for this next bit of business to all transpire, and the interview didn't start it off well. No, it did not. And as you said, we got a lot of feedback. Cult of Cornet Facebook group, emails, some tweets, listeners of this show, listeners who have enjoyed a lot of the people we're talking about, and they said that this promo went too long and it killed the room, and the match after it suffered greatly because of that. And that's what we saw play out here. And this was in an edited form. This was after having several days oh, shit. to produce it. That's right. Do you think they cut anything out of this? I'm not saying they did, but this is them after having a chance to sweeten it or do whatever they had to do to make this Good. more palatable. Well, is it because Jay White has never done television interviews because he's never been on television? They don't have interviews in New Japan. To my awareness, they don't have television in any promotion he'd work for in the UK or Australia or wherever the fuck he's from. In New Japan, sometimes after a big match, you may get on the mic and just start talking to the fans, but there's no rush. You can kind of take your time. And again, there's a translation thing. And then they do the scrums, the press conferences afterwards where a wrestler shows up and breathes heavy and does their promo there. He's done well with that, is what we've heard from a lot of people. We've seen a little bit of it, but this was not the setting for his promo at all. Well, it was... It was all of them, and they had to go back. Tony was just standing there through the whole thing because Jay White took the microphone and did a promo, and it was eh. And then the guns come in, and they picked it up with some oomph because they've got personality, but after they got finished, then Tony jumps in and tells them that, well, the rest of the Bullet Club's barred from ringside for this match you've got with Starks coming up, Juice. And then Jay White took the microphone back, and cut a promo on punk and wants his belt that's in his goodie bag. And it was meandering and went back and forth. And poor Tony Schiavone sounds 80 years old now, something with his voice. I don't know. Then they started talking about FTR and it just got longer and longer. And juice didn't talk. The guy was wanting to hear from. That's right. And then when they finished this long promo, then on the screen, Punk and FTR and Starks popped up and Punk responded to them. And FTR talked about the guns. And Starks promo Juice, and it was long. And by then, they're at 9 o'clock. And Starks and Juice was the 9 o'clock hour match. And they had a good wrestling match. It, it was serious. There was no flips and no floor and etc. But the problem was, is it was a small crowd who were worn out by the previous segment, and this wasn't a fantastic match. It was a good, solid match, and it was a little long, too, because it was almost 15 minutes. And then finally, Starks won it, one, two, three, but then as the heels were going to surround him, FTR and Punk ran out, no music, to even the odds, and the heels bailed out. But a lot of the fans booed the baby faces making the save. <laughs> so it was 30 minutes from the start of the Bullet Club promo to the end of this match, and it was just, it was a while. It took a while. It did, and as much as we've liked Juice Robinson and Jay White, you know, he's been all right, and the guns show a world of potential, they're still being established. They're not established with the casual fan, with the average viewer, with the person who's not sitting in Hamilton. And they didn't really seem to react well to this. When they're in there with Punk or FTR, it's one thing, but when they're working long matches and people aren't fully invested in them yet, they shouldn't be working long yeah. matches. Yes, I concur. 